you are probably tired at this point about me doing the silly obsessing that I have done at the microphone of examining and and furthermore enjoying what's happening at first take and undisputed. Seeing Stephen A. Smith take first take 11 and a half years, that's a long time to be doing anything, and make it his show where he's going to you know, maybe he'll bring on Shannon Sharp, but it really, it is his show, his playground to bring Mad Dog Russo on and have a good time. And then to see Skip, the guy who gave that platform to Stephen A. Smith at the start, the same way he gave it to Shannon Sharp, to create debate television and trolling as announcers, professional wrestlers. It's been fascinating to me to watch a generation of sports journalists that I came up with how it is they go about aging in a very competitive space and a very difficult space. The next choice that Skip Bayless makes opposite him is he has to take two weeks off or two months off because he can't quite do it the way Stephen A. does, which is just get me a bunch of rotating people. I'll just do it with a bunch of rotating people. It's no problem. He can't do it that way. He wants it to be a certain way, and he's worked with just a few people ever on how to make it be what he wants it to be. So he's shutting down one of the greatest chairs one of the greatest couple of chairs that we have in sports journalism before football season. He's shuttering the thing. And whether you like those things or not, I think they're comedically, cartoonishly silly. But if you like those things or not, they are the industry leaders, for better or worse. Along the rest of the landscape, I mean, when you look at the powerful signature voices, whoever they are, Dan mm -hmm. Patrick is now saying he's going to retire in 2027. Colin Cowherd... Jim Rome, whatever the signature voices have been in this space, aging, I'm genuinely curious how some of them are going to try and make it to what Bayless is at 70, which is still in the game by being just the most absurd. The most absurd. Just hate LeBron for 20 years. Don't enjoy the 20 years. Just hate them. I'm a cartoon media villain, and that's what I'm doing. But the one that I find more interesting than that is what Cowherd's doing. Because Cowherd is super calculated about how he gets people to listen, and he knows that there's money in being wrong. So he's got no problem taking out Justin Fields as a quarterback, because why not? It's content, and it's not a human being. It's just something I said once upon a time. Being wrong doesn't cost me anything. I'll just go after Justin Fields, but I'll do this purposely and purposefully. I'm going after that guy, Justin Fields, because he's an avatar for something. Eh, is he a quarterback? Is he running back? What is he as the game changes? Can he, can he be the things that the quarterback has always been, which is Peyton Manning? I'm going to question him. I'm going to question him loudly. And then he does it in the greatest way possible because this is the way that he does it. And I just loved it because if you're looking at it from someone calculated to bother you, he's always been 60-40 that, that Justin Fields is going to succeed. And today, in July... Because the football machine must be fed, he's pulling back five percent. What? Oh my! God. Which way? Wow. He's pulling back. He's pulling back from sixty forty. He's going to succeed to fifty five forty five. I thought we were going to get fifty fifty, but he's like, I'm not ready for that. Not yet. yet. Not he yet. still thinks he will succeed, but he's leaving himself the chance that he's going to be less wrong because he moved it back five percent. Fifty five percent. It sounds like he's less certain that he's going to succeed, right? But then here playing this same game, mm -hmm. slides in on Fox Sports as well. Craig Carton comes in and says Daniel Jones is arguably one of the best running quarterbacks in the league. Holy shit. Arguably. Arguably. I like the arguably. Look at what we're doing there. I'm ready for an Saquon's argument. Saquon's holding out. Daniel Jones might be a young savior at the quarterback position. Can't have too much Lamar Jackson at quarterback. No. Got to prop up some Daniel Joneses. Daniel Jones can scoot. He can scoot. He can. I like it. I I'm like, like 50, 55, 45 that I'm going to go to the gym today. That's You know what's funny? That is such a weird percentage, right? Like 50, 50, 60, 40. Then it goes to like 90, 10, right? No one really wants to hear about 75, 25. That's just too many, too many syllables in there, right? Well, 80, 20 my way. 80, 20? That's just two gots, yeah. Mm -hmm. But most people don't do 80-20. They go 90-10.
They go nine. It goes one hundred percent, ninety ten, and then we drop to sixty forty. Sixty forty is a big yeah. one, though. Sixty yeah, forty right is a big that. one. Sixty forty is. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna err on the side of history here, like just to make. You're gonna err. You're gonna err. Err. Hot and her. Err. Yeah. What do you? How do you guys say it? Is it not err? Air. 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 Air on the side like of history. Air. A i r. Yeah, Nelly. Air. Uh, no, I, I, I err. I err on the side of history, right? What you're saying, and it's what I'm saying as well, the way that Colin Coward is going to age is better and more pioneering than anyone ever because, I mean, has never heard anyone go 55, 45. Dude, think about that. Like, he's staking out territory on unclaimed land. It is the Wild West of sports takes. And everyone's like huddled by the Mississippi. Oh, this is this is where we gotta be right here. Oh, 50-50, 60-40. And Colin Cowherd says, packing the wagon, heading over here to these Oklahoma territories for some 60, for, no, some 55-45 action. How about that? You know what's gonna happen though? Much like the expansion of the of the West in the United States, manifest destiny. There's going to be a bunch of people going to flood into it. We're going to see a lot more 55, 45. Well, minutes. once he's blazed the trail, once you've pioneered the trail, it's easy for a lot of people to come following through. I just, I do want to pay some attention to the idea, though, that we're going to have in the backfield as we fight over money between the running backs not that important yeah. anymore and which quarterbacks are also runners because – Okay, Lamar Jackson's good enough to be an MVP, but I'm afraid he's going to get hurt. And now the most withering of criticisms happens two months before the games is start have started. Colin Cowherd is here to tell you he's already dropped 5% on what Justin Fields is going to be. As Is he going to be a runner? Is he going to be a quarterback? Which is it that I want in this league? Can I trust him to be a quarterback? Like, as the position entirely changes – and and uh, Tony gets wrapped up in this Netflix series because they're about to chronicle. They need to build right now the future faces of this league. They need to make sure because all the old guard, Roethlisberger's, the Tom Brady's, Aaron Rodgers, all the people who raised 20 years of football fans, they've got to introduce us to the next generation. And so they're doing so with Mahomes and everybody else. And the, the cool way they did it is that they did different tiers of quarterbacks, right? You have the elite tier. You've got Patrick Mahomes. You've got just about the second tier of quarterbacks with Kirk Cousins, and then you've got somebody who's usually trying to make a name for himself, and that's Marcus Mariota who's gotten you know pinballed around the league and certain things like that. But the next evolution of quarterback, is it Jalen Hurts? Is it a Daniel Jones? Is it a Lamar? Who's going to give us the access to go see what it is that you do at home and things like that? That's why it's such a transcendent show. Hard Knocks only gives us so much. Quarterback takes you to their house. You're interviewing their wives. You're talking to, like, seeing their kids. It's a much more intimate product. Well, Hard Knocks gives you that, but yeah. they give you a five-minute clip of at the quarterback's house where this is, like, the entire show. Yeah, we're not going to badmouth Hard Knocks. I'm that's not, not, that's not what we're going to do here. Hard Knocks gives us Liv Schreiber using that voice where he talks about. Meanwhile— it's the best thing about it. Oh, my God. And, and yes, they do go to the house, and you always, you always meet, like, the newlywed, right? Like, oh— we just got married right before he got drafted or whatever, and there's usually a little toddler in there, and you see them like, oh, this big lineman, he's playing with the little toddler. Look how gentle he can be. No one does it better than Hard Knocks. It's the last guy on the roster, though, and it makes you care about it great, but then he gets cut, That's and then you it. don't remember his name. I love when the two rookies like go go-karting. It's fabricated. What? It's not fabricated. It's they totally actually went, fabricated. They actually went go-karting. No, for sure, but it's like, hey, we're going to put these two guys together. Go be buddy cops said go-kart. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Have you seen Quarterback yet? I have not. Okay. I, I plan on watching it, though, because it does sound very it? interesting, but I just know that Hard Knocks, no one's ever going to touch Hard Knocks because here's what we get from Hard Knocks. First of all, we get, like, a setup with a rousing speech with that music hitting. Dun -dun -dun -dun. You know, the music just comes in little bits here and there. Dun -dun 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 -dun. And then, doo, 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 and, and you get that drama from there. Here's what you're going to get from Hard Knocks. Rookie hazing. Hey, you got that in your little quarterback show? Didn't think so. Didn't think so. I want to see these guys sing songs terribly and then act like they don't know what they're doing. I hate I, that part. I love that part. I love when there's, and then there's always that one guy. You look at him like, who's this guy? And he comes out and he belts like full, full range of octaves. In the song, like this guy can really sing. Quarterback is taking you inside the mind of these quarterbacks. So there's an entire episode where they're just talking about play calling and what they have to do to prepare for the for the game that next week. And they give you 17 sentences that these quarterbacks have to run out to the field, remember, 
know what everybody's doing on the play, and then recite it over and over and over again. I, I'll give you that, and I raise you. Does quarterback, and you watch the whole thing? Yeah. At any moment, do you have a quote as great as John Gruden say, a lot of people have dreams. They were dreams of playing in the NFL, dreams of, of winning a Super Bowl, dreams of being MVP. Well, I'm not in the dreams. I'm in the fucking nightmares. Is there one quote there as is. good as that? There is. You ready? Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes says, you woke up the wrong motherfucker. But does Aiden Hutchinson sing Billie Jean? Doesn't matter. Hold on, man. You woke up the wrong motherfucker. I'd like to capitulate that. I'd like to bend the knee. Mahomes. But is that, at the, is that at the start of the episode, though, and then where the music crescendos oh, the right mu- into it, huh? Was it? It's, at a big, it's at a massive point where him and Max Crosby, uh, D lineman for the Raiders, yeah. have been arguing all game. He's been hitting cheap shots on Mahomes the entire game. He throws a touchdown, I think one of the third or the fourth to Travis Kelsey, gets in Max Crosby's face and says, That's right, I'm that motherfucker! Let me tell you something, Gooseys. Dan. What makes that story amazing is, one, because we know that Patrick Mahomes is that mf I won't put Jeremy to work anymore on Thank that. you. Right? But also, fuck, just imagine for a second Patrick Mahomes' voice saying that. You're wrong. <laughs> He's got that Muppet voice. I can't You're wrong, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Mr. with the wrong motherfucker here. <laughs> no, he's not Kermit the Frog. He's not Kermit, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Kermit the Frog here. Patrick Mahomes. Yay! You Dan, wake up the wrong motherfucker. Dan, do your Kermit. I, uh, I'm not going to give any more work to anybody here. You thought, as executive producer of this show, I just want to question your judgment for a second. As the person who's in charge here, and we had to be careful with how much we were bleeping because Tony got carried away. And, you know, we just, the one word we need to be careful with is that one. Which is motherfucker? Good luck with this, uh, McAfee at ESPN. <laughs> uh, but you decided, as leader of our proceedings, to just, if we were to play that back, you just said it for no good reason after everybody was done in order to give Jeremy work in order to make him bleep something out. The story that got Tony so excited, and oh my Lord. one of the reasons that the story is great is because uh, Max Crosby is straight out of Sons of Anarchy. It's not just what he was saying, it's who he was saying it to. <laughs> I don't know anything about this kidnapping story that Lucy wants so badly to talk <laughs> about. Like every time to look at her, like she is just she is simply delighted. She is giddy. I don't know what is happening with her right now. I honestly don't. I am obsessed with this story. So let me paint a little background. A couple days ago, a tw- and I sound really happy, and I know there's the context of kidnapping, but we will get to why I'm excited about it. Sounds this. like you're smiling. Well, it this is like the problem. problem. And I am smiling. This is, well, this is the problem, Chris. We need to do this. I, I don't know. Maybe is it because the story is funny, but it's funny and sad because you sound off, awfully happy about a kidnapping story. It is sad if you think about the ramifications of it, but it's really funny. She's it's, got the Pablo thing going on where you can hear her smile. It's Here's a good story. <laughs> okay, but she's very excited to tell this story, and I don't know the details of this story. Other you haven't than, heard about this? No, I heard, well, I heard a lot of people were talking about a crazy kidnapping yeah. story that wasn't actually a kidnapping. Yes, so basically a couple days ago, a 25-year-old woman in Alabama went missing. Uh, she got kidnapped because she saw a toddler on the side of the highway pulled over she was on the phone with her family and then she screamed and everyone was like oh my god she's gone i read that story and i was like i started to cry because i was like this girl is not coming back like just the details of it i thought this woman was dead and then she just shows back up which is you would think is a happy story but they were like why did you just like show back up why don't you just like walk up to the door and all of these things started coming out about how the day that she got kidnapped, she Googled the movie Taken. Her uh, Google searches also included, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? She was looking for bus tickets. Mm-hmm. Like it all came out that this did allegedly did not happen. And the cops just said they can't like verify any of her story. So we think she just faked her own kidnapping. I have questions. I have answers. It seems like Chris Cody also has questions. I'm just, that's wild. 
It's literally insane. Thank you. That's so, not a question. That's, that's not a question. Not, that's well, not you a threw it to me. I'm just and I didn't have a question. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do with that? Well, but, it is well, wild. <laughs> it looks like Dan has a question. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a thousand questions. How can you not? Why is she faking it? Why did she just show up? What is it that, with the toddler that was happening? Okay, yeah. So I, I want to start there. Toddler on the side of the road, of the side of the highway, sounds like the worst lie ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think why she went with that is because you will see things on TikTok that are like, if you see a woman and a baby ask for help, like, don't stop. It's a sex trafficking tactic. But a couple sex trafficking experts have come out and been like, that's not a common tactic they use. <laughs> and then so she called 911 before she called her family. And according to her timeline, like with her 911 call, that toddler would have had to walk the length of six football fields on the side of a highway where other cars were driving and no and one called yeah. except for this woman. I have to, and I'm sorry if this is not funny, but I think it can be funny since there was no actual toddler and it was imaginary. I now love the idea of a toddler wandering next to the highway for six football fields to somehow to somehow navigate it healthily and arrive at the end to, to arrive at a kidnapping because of how visually amazing it would be to see a toddler uh, back and forth, going six football fields as trucks came by. Yeah, like holding a stick with a with a blanket bindle, wrapped around it with bindle, stuff in there, yeah. just sort of strolling along. Herman. But instead of smoking a cigarette, they've got like a lollipop in their mouth. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the idea of a toddler on the run. So, what other parts of the story were ridiculous? So one of my favorite parts. But not on the run, on the waddle, right? It's not, it's just you don't imagine a toddler really running. One of my favorite parts of this story is before she got kidnapped, I said with air quotes, um, she went to Target and got a bunch of snacks. So when they found her car, her wallet was there, her watch was there, all her, her cell phone, but the snacks were gone. She brought the snacks with her to the next kidnapping lo location. I'm not going to go hungry and do this. Like, that's just ridiculous. What do you think <laughs> and, this is? And then in her, like, statement she gave to the police, they were like, what happened to you? And she said that they took photos of her, you know, not good photos of her, but that the woman that just light. fed her cheese and crackers and played with her hair the whole time. Nice. Which I'm like, really? You got kidnapped for that? Just yeah. to... Have some snacks. So what, what are you obsessed with on the story, though? I mean, like, what is it that you're fascinated by well, on this story? Do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? Say that one more time. Do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? You don't have to pay for an Amber That's Alert. That's what I thought. Like, yeah, why, think... like, you can't be like, hey, my, my kid's missing. Yeah. I don't have the money. Yeah, yeah, like, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I guess you don't like your kid that much. This is America. That absolutely could happen. Yeah, I guess charge it for the Amber Alert. Yeah, they charge for the ambulance. They charge for the Amber Alert. This sounds like the movie Gone Girl to me, except oh! poorly executed. Like yes. in Gone Girl, it all Wild. goes great. Maybe they kidnap themselves, and that's what's going on. I, I think this woman probably watched Gone Girl and was like, "Nope, this uh, is my she watched Taken. 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 She watched Taken. taken though, what's the internet speculation? Like, what are people thinking happened here? Okay, so this is all speculation. I went Wait. down the TikTok. Play oh, yeah, the sound. Wait a sound. I'll find it. I'll find Set it. I'll find it before one. Chris Cody does. Time to throw away all journalistic credibility and get reckless. Here is something we like to call reckless speculation. You're good. Okay, so the TikTok rabbit hole I went down last night basically was like the her boyfriend who released a statement when, you know, she went missing, he had cheated on her. Wow. And she wanted to get her revenge, make him feel really bad, which I'm sure worked. Probably not now after it's been kind of exposed that she wasn't really kidnapped, but the theory is it's a revenge kidnapping. But that's all TikTok speculation. Let me just say right now, if a woman that I was involved with went to these lengths to make me feel bad and then gets exposed the way she's getting exposed right now, that is the greatest infomercial for me ever. Because you know how many women are going to be like, what is it about him that's so special that she went above and beyond? Like, that's right. Come find out. Yeah, I would not view it that way. How do you play? Yeah. I would this more like he drove her so crazy that she felt the need to fake her own kidnapping. Oh, man. She was trying. How long was she gone for? A few days. And she showed up, she had like a busted lip, but she was pretty much unharmed, and she also had like $100 of cash in her sock. 
We think she stole that from her job. What? She looked up how to get money from a cash. Well, register. what's the busted lip? Did she have to? Did she fake a busted lip? I think so because, like, she said that they didn't. All they did was play with her hair and feed her snacks. Yeah. Okay, which but which is so weird. I, I, Crackers I, are very sharp. I still have. I still have a great many questions. Please um, ask them. Uh, uh, yes, because uh, I'm. I remain confused by why this has grabbed the attention of everybody, that somebody would go to the lengths to fake a kidnapping in order to make a boyfriend that wasn't appreciating her enough miss her mm -hmm. because she might be dead and there was a nationwide search for her. Mm. Clearly, you've never dated a toxic man before, Dan. I chose. Yep. <laughs> I, look, let me tell you something. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome to drive people to... These lengths, like, oh, my God, this is this was the only way out that she felt. She's like, I can't break up with him. I know what I'll do. I'll watch Taken and then steal well, 100 no, bucks I, from I, my I, job. This, hold on. If I may just rewind for a second, because my primary question, and forgive me if this is not the one people are asking as mm -hmm. they obsessed with this, but there was a distinction. You said watching Taken is the way that she decided to learn about kidnapping. But Lucy said, Googled Taken. <laughs> and I think that's a totally different thing. Hold if you're on. planning a, a, a kidnapping you're trying to fake, uh, just because the internet script or Wikipedia is telling you what Taken is versus watching the actual movie. Are you accusing this woman of pulling the Mina Kimes of not actually watching movies, but simply going to the Wikipedia plot section? What if, what if she just wanted to pull up the cast? I do that sometimes with movies. Oh, who was in that movie? Let me see. I Taken. Oh, okay. Boom. Taken. Is it. that before or after you check whether Amber Alerts are free or not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and be like, I don't think she was like, you know what? I need to watch this movie before I orchestrate this poorly planned kidnapping. Like, I think she was just living her life. Why do we go down rabbit holes? Like she said, she went down a TikTok rabbit hole. Uh -huh. I'm looking up a rabbit hole is only about two inches in diameter. It's uh, it's from Alice in Wonderland. All right, there it is. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry you thought that was gonna have more legs. Also, isn't a diameter? Isn't like it's not depth, but it's. All right, forget it, Lucy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Iowa mean, education over here. Look at me, Lucy, over here. Uh. Can we get imaging for that? I wanted, I think I thought I put it in the slack. Look at me, Lucy. Look at me, Lucy imaging. Yes. I love it. See? We don't have it. Is, oh, is look at me, Lucy, better than look at me, Louise? Because I, I I like to go z at the end of the look at me, Louie. I mean, we just easier. happen to have somebody named Lucy here. Uh, can, uh, <laughs> please, point. Uh, just explain this to me, executive producer of Things Falling Through the Crack. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> You know where I'm going with this, right? You know that. What's up? Uh, yeah, uh, that I have asked the seventy thousand producers that we have on our show to develop imaging for "Look at Me, Lucy." I put it in the Slack, a Slack no one reads because everyone's too busy vacationing. "Look at Me, Lucy" is something we're supposed to have imaging for as part of the onboarding of Lucy Rodine, and that imaging is where. Is that how you pronounce her last name? It is. <laughs> I'm glad it. you learned. I've been saying it wrong. You've been be saying awesome. it, Roden? Yeah. That's okay. You know I'm not funny? mad about it. Our mutual friend, John Budish, never corrected me. What? Yeah. Never corrected me JB. That's hurtful. Bootsy. I love a good mutual friend. Yeah? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris, your production of today's Chris, your production of today's proceedings. Oh my lord! No, listen, you're not going to try and walk me off this with your soundboard, uh, Chris. Gosh. There have been like three times today I've been talking straight into your face on a microphone, and you're not listening to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Die. The, the lean into the the, the, Can't into the see monitor. He's trying to get closer. <laughs> the lean into the monitor and squeeze. Die. <laughs> oh man! If you listen to this podcast, man, I'm telling you, watch it. We're all gonna die. Watch it on YouTube, man. Yeah, unfortunately, mostly an audio medium. <laughs> Chris.
Chris Cody, how do you feel about the job you're doing so far today in charge in the seat? Well, it's not about me, Dan. I look around at the faces in this room, and I see people that are having a nice day at work, so I feel like we're having a good day. It's not about me. boy. Well, one of the reasons that he's risen up the ranks to this executive producer chair somehow, uh, because Chris Cody, shockingly enough, it seems after being let go from ESPN, he says, not fired. There you go. Let go from ESPN. Financial cuts had nothing to do with performance. Uh, and uh, whatever nepotism you think is involved with. I work hard. His father is one of my best friends in the world and has been for 40 years. And I told him not to get into this business. And what's the result? He's going to be running the whole thing soon. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like, no, no, the whole thing, because people will follow you, because they like you, because you're good with – that. The, the key to real leadership is just be good with a chuckle and a smile, have everyone like you, and so you don't get hit with all of the office ego of people trying to elbow for power. You have somehow, as the seed of your father, and having more in your father, more of your father in you than I'm comfortable to admit as someone who has known you since a child. Seeing you rise up to the producer, the, to this role where you're this close to executive producer is a tribute to you, but not as much as it is to the incompetence all around you. That's right. It's all, let me, I, I'm not the only one who's improved. I've seen you from the start too. Oh. You, you used to just come into my dad's house, make a plate of Tostitos chips, throw some cheese on there. Throw it in the microwave. Now you won't touch a carb. Hold on. You were you were coming over to the Cody household and raiding their I, kitchen? I was crushing their Tostitos. <laughs> crushing them. He wouldn't even say hi. He would just walk in the door, grab the chips, put them on the plate, cheese in the microwave. I mean, he taught me. I do that to this day. I still <laughs> I mean, do that. unbelievable. Such instant, a nice, easy snack. Instant nachos? Are you kidding me? But I go by look, though. Because I don't like you don't want them too done. So what you do is you do you throw twenty seconds on there. They don't need twenty seconds, mm -hmm. and then you just stare into the microwave Ooh. and you wait till the cheese just gets just bubbly enough, not overdone, but a little bubbly. Boom! Stop right there. Pull it out. Delightful treat. Aren't they uh, a little soggy? You know that weird kind no. of thing that happens to. That's the key to not going. It can't you, be too long. Right. Can't, you can't take the starch out of them. They just gotta, want the they cheese to get melted and then stop. Is this shredded cheese or is this like regular shredded cheese? Yes. Shredded okay. cheese. You had yes. slices of Kraft, Kraft cheese. Singles on, on a chip. I mean, it depends on what. No, it, yeah. it depends on the uh, income level that you're on. Yeah, no, that's uh, the hunks of El I grew up on government cheese. Uh, my family Geese. did. Geese. Geese. <laughs> Re you can't be no, in control no, of both of those that. things. That's that's not the way that that works. Well, that's not what you do with the power is give yourself the laps. That's how you're going to be e executive producer. There was a story that we did not get to around the messy introduction that I was confused by. I haven't actually seen the video we're about to show you in here. I have just heard about it because I was legitimately confused when I came in here a couple of days ago. And you guys told me that the Lionel Messi introduction was so rainy and so storm-filled, and this was the phrase that was used that got my attention, that some dude got hit by a fridge. Like, literally? Well, oh, that, wait, let's see. That, oh! Oh! Jesus. That, God damn. <laughs> that, that sentence, I had not seen that video, so the storm around... The, are we joking now? The storm around the messy introduction was such that a giant fridge-like contraption just hit a dude who was trying to cross the street in a parka because it was flooding out there. I'm going to skeptical Billy this. That lo it, it looks like somebody off camera tossed that, like pushed Shut that thing. Out I, I don't think it did, but it's just it's moving so fast. It's spinning. This is wacky. You, don't, th back, yeah, you don't think it could be the wind? You don't think that that... That there's a flying object here. And today's yeah. theme of the climate's going to come and kill you. But in the background, you can see another trash can that's it's not stable, yeah. spinning. I mean, no, I, that, I, that seems like somebody somebody shoved that crate over. What a time. It's like, oh, it's a big storm. I hate this guy. How do we? How do I throw a fridge at this guy? Let's wait till it's real stormy. And then no one will it's, suspect I don't it. Think Hold it's on a, a second, guys. Yep. If you replay that video, let's go back to that video. Run it back. I want to be a little Ron Rothstein here. Uh, so when you see it, <laughs> not it. only do you Roll see it. a little bit of a shadow Pause on it. the back side of the fridge on the metal uh -huh. right there, all of a sudden at the end you see somebody step in. Oh, right, right there, the, right there. Let, let it run a little, uh, bit a little, a little back. Little bit. Yep. Up, up, Keep going. Up. Do less. Up. No. Too much. Yeah, uh, you, you you can see where the telestrator right is a little there. hard. Yeah, a little hard to tell Lewis and uh, stop and, right now. Back. And yeah, that's yeah, not. This the, is great. So wait, right there. We've turned into Chris Berman. 
back, 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 back. Uh, Tony, the uh, Raiders. Tony, this is what I'm going to ask you to do right now because of what you just did to the show, okay? We'll get hit with the fridge. Uh, no, but go <laughs> cannonball into the pool for the rest of your work day because wow. I, I didn't get that payoff Wait, earlier over in the over show. Again? No, just That's one a lot time. of cannonballs. No, just one time, a single oh. cannonball. I, I want the camera crew to follow you up there. I want to use uh, the, the pool deck, and I want to get the payoff of that because what you, deck. Ju- what you just did, and it's basically just to give you and the video department work because Uncle Deck. Because you just thought that the Metal Arc video department was so quick that you could throw it to video and be like Ron Rothstein in an instant. Yes, I'm going to take the whole video department and I'm going to get them to telestrate this for me because that's how it works on television, right? It's not prepared. It's not planned before the show. I'm just going to tell. This is how I'm going to do it at Metal Arc Media. Watch. Watch this. This is how I'm going to do it. Ready? Hold on. All right, for the audio audience, he's gotten up, he's walking out. As he slams the door, all the cameras shake. <laughs> you weren't ready. You weren't ready. Lewis was not ready for Wait a minute. You can understand Lewis's confusion, correct? Where he's saying to himself, wait a minute. Did Tony just take the whole show and throw it at me so that I can find right now in an instant a guy in the shadowy waters behind the fridge so that I could do the show that Tony has in his head? And I can show people exactly what Tony was theorizing, which is that there's a conspirator here, that they were throwing the, the, the fridge from one person to another, Tony. There's a shadow. That fridge is for sure on wheels. But if you look right there, right, exactly right there, right there's there. a shadow yeah. of something in the back. And then at the end frame, you see somebody step in exactly where somebody would have pushed it. That's what I was trying to get to, Dan. Right there. There's one right there. And then the Roll last it. frame of the entire shot. Stop it. All of a sudden, a guy with a cowboy hat comes in. And <laughs> that's not a exactly cowboy hat. Exactly where... That's not a look, guy with watch a cowboy hat. Watch towards the end, Dan. A cowboy hat? Hold on. Hold on. Everybody just slow down. Let's see this right here. And... Oh, it trucks him right there. No cowboy hat. Wait, where's... It? Keep going all the way to the end. <laughs> stop. Go through. All right, so, Back. Tony, I'm going to stop right here. Chris Hold Cody, on. your Cannonball. Head, Chris Cody, your head has hit the microphone, and it should. because There it is. There he is. Oh, right there. Yeah. There he is right there. No from cowboy ex- hat. That oh, looks like exactly that's where it was. Somebody. That looks like me. Victory. <laughs> that was Chris Cody all along. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. What does that mean? There was a guy with a cowboy and hat. Yeah, like one of those furled cowboy hats. You know what I mean? Like Kenny Chesney style that he yeah, wears it what, like a little what, bit up. But what have you yeah, solved? It's, <laughs> like, it's like uh, the, the fugitive. <laughs> the cement. The man. <laughs> the one on the other okay, wait, so we did all of that. You know what? Go to the pool and go get out. Just get out. It, the new punishment is not... It is not going to be the penalty box. It's he said the, he doesn't want to go in the pool. No. <laughs> you think it's a choice? He it's, only has one pair of skivvies. It's, it's, yeah, it's, no, thank not, you, Chris. It's not a choice. I'm, I'm going to need this from you, Tony. Before the end of the show, I need the payoff. Thank you. Underdogs. Please. I need you to come back with your white uh, or your wet undergarments. Brookies. <laughs> your brookies. Unmentionables. Your unmentionables better be wet, is what I'm telling you. Smalls. <laughs> Your smalls better be wet. I can't believe what you just did. Have you not worked with Lewis long enough to know? I haven't. They did exactly what I needed them to. It just took a second. That's all. (laughs) It just took you screaming from the other room to make sure that they were on their. That was the step that you were missing. You didn't Ah, open the door and scream down the hall. (laughs) (laughs) Lewis, (laughs) that's what you needed to do. Followed by a brisk sh- slam of the door to shake every single camera. Just in case Lewis didn't hear, he'd see the cameras. He would shake. feel the vibrations of the earthquake. Lewis, not thrilled right now in my ear. <laughs> you know, I actually did some reporting on Messi. Oh, did you? Yeah. Or at least I think Give us, it's uh, reporting. Is it reporting or is it reckless speculation? It's not reckless speculation because I have sources. Oh, oh sources. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's nothing Excuse like me. it's Jeez. nothing wild and nefarious. I'll say the report first, and then we can get into the nuts and bolts of how I got this. Because I I think there's a good conversation <laughs> here. How you how you got this? Right. Oh, no. I'm gonna tell you oh, my no. report. Oh, time right. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off, but we gotta go to the main feed where Lewis is now. Okay. Giving double birds. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I, what are we doing? 
Well, I, and now he's thrown it. He's left. He's left the control room. He he didn't slam the door. He just kind of flung it open as he walks. So out. he's quit now. Lewis has quit because who is he? Who is he mad at? I don't know. I'll take the blame. It's me, Dan. That, 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 yeah, he just <laughs> bleeping all of us. I'll take the blame, Dan. That's on me. <laughs> He you know left. what leadership is? He walked Taking out of the, the building. Blame. I saw him walk out. Hashtag justice for Lewis. <laughs> oh, my God. What a day we're having. You want him to jump in the pool for you? Oh, yeah. That was there sacrificial it is. lamb. I mean. Well, go up and take him to r- jump in the pool for you. But did he bring any? Underdax. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you use another? I'm not familiar with that term. I just hope he has an extra pair of brookies. Well, I do declare. All right, so you guys don't care about my report. Fine, I won't tell you. I do care about your report, but I'm confused by how it is that you feel comfortable being a reporter. What do you know about Messi? You've got world-exclusive news. That seat usually is Mike Ryan giving serious Messi news. You've got good, you've got serious breaking news. you got sources. I have sources that tell me that Lionel Messi has a very weak handshake. Wow. Now... How does this work? How many pe- like how many people will I, would I have had to talk to to be able to say this on air? Two unrelated sources. So the, wow. it, they didn't know that I was like talking like they I guess can't, it can't be I have like that. the one source told the other I source. I have that. I have two of them. Two I also have sources. I might have also had a third who said he had a good handshake. Can I just forget oh, that I talked to that person? Wow. How does that work? Or is that conflicting reports? That conflicting, conflicting reports. reports. The Multiple major- sources. The majority of sources say. So if I get one more and I have three that say bad and one that say good, then I can report it. What have you heard about? Is it a flimsy handshake? Just flimsy, just and not three good. fingers. Well below average. Three fingers is the worst when they just hand that part. Nobody does that, do they? <laughs> Dead fish. <laughs>